things that you don't say in academia. And I actually want to address some of these things because I want you to be happy and healthy and have a reasonably good life. And there are some really strong norms that happen in academia. So if you don't know me, I am Professor Dave Massack. I'm Associate Professor of Innovation and Strategy. And I created this whole reciprocity project to give back as much as I possibly can. So the idea behind academia is um, the, the basic theme is that you are dedicated to the profession so strongly that you're willing to give up everything in your life. And that is the entire, that's the entire thing. That's the story. <laughs> um, and if you were to say things in academia, like I take time for myself on the weekends, I exercise, I, um, I, I, I didn't get a chance to actually read that thing. I am not necessarily as good as what it says on paper. If you say things like that, it discredits who you are and other people somehow, or there's a belief that other people are gonna discredit you and make you feel not so great. So there is a whole host of all of these things and everybody that's been in the academic game that's done research has run into this and there's this kind of one-upmanship and it, the one-upmanship is the basic story that is told um, in grade nine, grade 10, grade 11 of all of the sort of super high achievers where the basic story is this. I did not work that hard, but um, I have become super successful. That's one basic story. The other one is I work all the time and um, anybody that doesn't work as, me, as much as me is not good enough, right? Those basic stories play out. Um, and that was stories that I remember hearing in high school, I mean, not so much in my high school, it was kind of not necessarily, you know, I grew up in a, in a, in a more of a country school, um, so it wasn't that big of a thing, but I remember hearing it in my undergrad when it started getting a little bit more competitive, um, especially heard it all the time. Um, I still hear that now, that's our basic story of, I need to work as much as I possibly can or demonstrate that I work as much as I possibly can. And um, if I don't do that, then everybody's gonna make me feel terrible, right? And that's what it comes down to. That's where I want you to sort of think about these things is not necessarily what is the message that's being said, but think about who's actually saying it or how it's coming through. Often, and, and it's, I mean, no matter how the message is said, it's still very difficult to take uh, or, you know, who said it or whatnot. But um, often think about that, right? Like, what is it that's being said and sold? Um, and the message is that I am not good enough. And that's usually what's happening is that the message that's being sent is from the person that's actually sending it. It's not necessarily the person that's receiving it right? It's the person that's actually sending it, sort of showing all of their weaknesses. And um, I don't even like that term, right? Showing their, their basic traits that they are as human beings. And they're displaying things that they're insecure and they don't feel uncomfortable about. It's part of the reason why I actually talk about this a lot. Is because I feel insecure about the amount of times uh, the amount that I actually work, because I always feel like I should be working more. I always feel like I'm not good enough. I always feel like um, I am not successful enough. And all of those things are gonna come out whenever you're in the academic game. There always feels like there's more that you can possibly do because there's a sort of competition that's gonna get you. And that is true. All of that is true. But at the same time, there's only so much that you can possibly do. And having a healthy and happy life is the best possible way that you could succeed over a long time. And the way that I think about myself, and I've, I've talked about this um, a few times before, 
I think of myself as kind of a machine or kind of a, a, a mechanism. And you have to do maintenance. You have to sort of make sure that the machine is, is kind of well-oiled. And that's kind of the story that is vastly told within the sort of organizational behavior kind of research that, that you're basically some sort of machine and then you have to upkeep that machine. Um, and the way that you upkeep that machine is you make sure you have kind of regular hours, you make sure that, you know, you're spending time to, to, to fix that machine, you know, all of those kind of things. And so that's where I really want you to go is to think about how can you make sure that this machine that you're running is is running at peak performance for as long as it possibly can. And so if you were to think of, and this is, you know, this is a true story. This is what happened with the um, the Chernobyl disaster. So there was a big disaster, nuclear explosion that happened in Ukraine back in 1984. And what they were doing is they were pushing the limits of that reactor and going at 110%. And guess what? That reactor exploded. So if they would have kept it within the sort of, standard operating, um, um, you know, the, the sort of paradigm that they should be in or the, the, you know, restrictions guidelines that they should be in, they would have been doing okay. So figuring out what those guidelines are and figuring out how can I maintain this for a long time? It's not just about peak performance today, but about peak performance for a long time. So having maintenance, um, whatever that is, like eating, brushing your teeth, simple things like that. Um, spending a little bit of time on the weekend for you to go uh, walking, to go, you know, going and catching a movie, right? Like all of those things are really important because what you're making this trade off is a sort of short term benefit to maximize what's today versus how long you can actually stay in the profession and how long that you can actually do this. And balancing those two, Man, it's a fine line, but you know when you go to one street extreme or the other. You have to make sure that you're doing okay on a daily basis, um, making sure that you are, are, are happy and healthy. And anytime that people come up and say things, these sort of unspoken things that disturb you or make you feel uncomfortable, try, I know it's super hard to do, try to just discount it and just sort of imagine that that is the trait that they're displaying about themselves. It's not a trait about you, it's about themselves. And if you interact with somebody that makes you feel bad on a regular basis, distance yourself um, and then try to work on making yourself feel good, right? And that's essentially it. There's no time that you should feel not that great on a regular basis. So figure out how to deal with that and you'll do just fine.